Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to this soft power platform and welcome back to a new video. And if you are new here, ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers, welcome. So I wanted to have a deeper dive conversation about how black women have been groomed to become the men of their own dreams. And I also wanted to talk about the growing social media trend that is now hitting mainstream levels with women of all ages, cultures, and nationalities, especially since the pandemic of 2020. And that is the public pushback of the soft girl revolution. And this is now starting to become a public conversation that is starting to both influence and to have a grip on a lot of women's imaginations. And it's now a conversation where the toothpaste can no longer be put back in the tube. Now for house cleaning purposes, I respect all women from all walks of life. And that includes career boss women as every woman's individual path will be different. But if you are a woman who has decided that having a husband or some kids is something that you could care less about, or is something that you can forego that as a trigger warning, this conversation may not be for you. So if being a girl boss is your preferred lane, this would be your prime opportunity to go find your tribe. But more importantly, this is also a gentle reminder that feminism is ultimately about a woman's right to choose the life that she wants. And that includes an unapologetic soft one and a hypergamous one like this one. When I tell people that I'm a housewife and I also don't have any children, the first question they ask me is, what do you do all day? So here's what I do all day. I got up and dressed. Here's a casual fit check. Because what could be more casual than Hermes and Chanel, am I right? Then I hopped in my husband's Jeep with my passenger princess, of course, to go to Starbucks. After that, I took my husband's truck to get a state inspection and get squeaky clean. And then dropped in at Peter Millar to pick up my husband's custom pants. Once I secured the goods, I figured I might as well get something for myself, because I know it's what my husband would want. I tried on some gorgeous bracelets at Hermes. You could have this one for the low, low price of $63,000. And then I took myself for a beautiful little snacky snack and a drink. And then I went home to show my husband my new little Hermes container. So cute. Ladies, don't let anyone make you feel bad for living the life you want, whether that includes kids or not. So for the love of Christ, please stop harassing, shaming, and bullying women, particularly black women who are trying their best to transition into softer living. And please stop projecting your fears and your worries and your divisiveness and your nitpicking deflection energy because it will not be tolerated in this space. Now, I first wanted to touch on this amazing cover story on the death of girl boss culture that was written by Stephanie McNeil over at Glamour Magazine. And I highly, highly recommend that you read this article in its entirety. And I will link to it in the description box below. But to highlight a few key talking points, Stephanie writes, welcome to the world of the soft girl, the lifestyle choice that many young women are now holding up as an ideal. The soft girl does not value the grind or getting ahead. She prioritizes slow living. Her days are filled with a nearly obsessive focus on self-care from making the perfect morning smoothie to tending to her skin and trading in hardcore hit workouts for leisurely cozy cardio. Long term, the soft girl dreams of making dinner for her husband and if she's got them, staying at home with her kids. She's not interested in making partner or founding her own company. She's in touch with her feminine energy, her menstrual cycle, and her moods. And for more on the menstrual cycle, I will drop a clip at the end of this video to even further explain that talking point. The soft life is having the time, the space, and the protection to heal the feminine. The soft life is romanticizing every moment of your day. The soft life is releasing the compulsion to produce and to accomplish every waking minute of the day. And in other words, to be a soft girl is to radically reject the idea of being the hashtag girl boss, which was considered the womanhood ideal of the late 2000s and 2010s. And I would argue for black women since the 90s and probably even further back, given our unique historical blueprint and our historical marginalization that is unlike any other woman's. Now I've been discussing femininity and more notably the importance of having a hypergamous relationship dynamic that will ultimately allow a woman to rest in her feminine for over four years on this channel. And to this very day, one of my most 
popular OG New Feminine videos is my over 35 video, which at the time, interestingly enough, that video gave me a lot of rage and bashing and a lot of angry hate mail and a lot of masculine pushback from all races of women simply because I addressed that a woman's desires and the things that will make her happy and fulfilled will evolve and grow and change as she ages. But for the record, hypergamous relationships have always existed and there have always been hypergamous black women and traditional wives and they are not the unicorns that everybody seems to think that they are. Hypergamous women as a rule have always moved in privacy and have always moved in silence as being a wife and mother has never been celebrated, pedestalized, platformed or championed in the black community or in black media. And being hypergamous has never been given the attention the way that being a career woman and being a boss woman has as black women have always been groomed to become the men of their own dreams. But a lot has changed in four years since that 35 and over video was dropped and now public rants of the desire for soft living are being made like this daily. And this video clip that I'm about to play is a wonderful example of just how much this conversation has evolved amongst black women, particularly older black women. Many of now who are waking up from the sleepwalking and from the consequences of girl boss engineering and who are now willing to be more openly honest about the toll of having to do it all as your own provider and as the man of your own dreams. So take a listen and I will be back with the rest of my commentary. Hey y'all. So I saw a tweet the other day that said black women are tired of working and I felt that in my spirit. So I just wanted to come on here and talk about it for a little bit. So just to give you a little bit of background about me, I have four college degrees, four, including a doctoral degree, which less than 2% of people in the entire world have. And I was raised, um, I'm in my forties, and I'm part of that generation of women that were raised to be strong and independent. Um, somewhere along the way, the strong, independent, and the don't need no man part was added in. Now that's not me, that's, that's not my testimony. I'm a Southern girl, I'm born and raised in the South, so I've never been one of those I don't need no man girls because you know family and children were always important to me. However, I digress. My generation, um, many, many women in my age range were raised to be strong, independent, professional, highly educated women. And most of my circle is. Most of my circle, um, you know, they're, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're educators. They have many degrees. They're doing quite well in life. And still, a lot of us have this in common right now. At this point in my life, four degrees later, professional, educated, um, I can say with, with all clarity and with all, I don't even know, I don't even know how to, to get this out of my, my heart right now, but let me just say this. I don't want to work anymore. I'm done. I'm tired of it. I am completely over it. Let me tell you what I want to do. I want to wake up in the morning. I want to make myself an espresso. I want to get dressed and go to yoga. Maybe do a little shopping afterwards, definitely have brunch, come home, cook, clean, you know, take care of my family, take care of my man. Tomorrow, rinse and repeat, um, insert Pilates instead of yoga because you know I have to, have to switch it up. Throw some volunteering in there. Of course, traveling, um, being a lady who lunches, a lady who shops whenever she feels like it. That's the life that I want. That is the life that I want for myself. I was raised to think completely differently. However, I've made it to the point where a life of leisure is the life that I want to live. And I know I'm not by myself. I've had this conversation with, with other women who are raised like me, just as educated. And a lot of us feel the same way. It's a very interesting phenomenon, but here we are. Now I found Doc Mocha's honesty to be so authentically sweet and heartfelt. And I am just happy that more and more black women are being so refreshingly honest about how unsatisfyingly exhausting their lives have really been. 
And I love this level of public acceptance for black women because there used to be a time when black women were too afraid and too shooketh to even admit that they needed rest and that they desired a man's provision. But the question that is begging to be answered is how did black women get here? Well, the answers are obviously very complicated. So this video will not be an attempt to address all angles, but most modern women, and this is regardless of race, but particularly black women have always been taught that success should only come from the hard work, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the muscle, and the elbow grease of becoming anything that a man can and should become. A businesswoman, a provider of herself without a man's influence or his help. And for many black women, the engineering goes even deeper as the black tax is a strong part of the black woman girl boss narrative where black women are groomed to become hypogamous breadwinners for their light bill paying baby daddies and to stretch themselves thin for their extended family members. As over 90% of black women are groomed to be surrogates and substitutes for the masculine divine. As self-made independence and success has always been pushed and shoved down black women's throats as the only proud badge of honor that a black woman should own. And this celebrated duty has turned many black women into the overwhelmed men of their own dreams. Now in your twenties, this narrative of drive and ambition can be cute and will get you lots of affirming attention from other boss black women. However, in your thirties, being the man of your own dreams will soon drain your feminine battery. And many black women at this point will have zero relationship skill sets on how to connect or how to create harmony with the masculine divine. And the visibility clout that comes with masculine success in your twenties starts to lose its luster due to burnout in your thirties and in your forties and fifties, you will hate it here. And the truth more often than not, and this may ruffle some feathers to hear, but you can go argue with your social worker, but many black women are pressured to prove themselves and are pressured into becoming surrogate men by other women, especially by other black women as black mainstream culture at its core is very matriarchal, making the narrative of becoming the man of your own dreams an expectation and a demand from both men and women. I mean, how many black women are made to feel that their value is only tied to how much that they can do for others until they are stressed out, overweight, with a back wider than Alaska. And it doesn't help that the femininity and the hypergamous movement amongst the black women is still kind of being ignored by mainstream media outlets such as Essence and the Grio. And these outlets will instead choose to reinforce the status quo, which is why Mr. Tyler Perry has gotten so much backlash for his paying the light bill comments. For the most part, college educated black women are not only expected to work as hard as their husbands if they have them, but also to become their husband's career and workplace equal. And over the years, I have had many private conversations with many provider for wives and homemakers from all walks of life. But with hypergamous black women in particular, there has always been a lot of pushback and a lot of super aggressive hostility towards black women who decided to become traditional wives or trad wives. And that decision has always been met with a lot of jealousy and envy and unkindness. And that is why hypergamous women for the most part will continue to move in privacy and silence. And as a personal testimony, not only is the experience of this hostility very accurate, but learning how to become the feminine woman of my own dreams took a lot of trial and error because you will realize that on the feminine journey, particularly as a black woman, that a lot of women will simply not support you. So therefore as a black woman, you will need to find your tribe. But moving forward, here are a few things that should be taught to both aspiring career women and soft life girlies. One, the more masculine your responsibilities, whether in your career or as a business owner, these are business demands, profit margins, long work hours, billable hours, hiring and firing employees, the lower a woman's chances of finding a hypergamous relationship as a high value provider, masculine man will typically seek out available feminine women who respect the traditional values of a male led romantic relationship. Moving on early on career women typically do not aspire to marriage, but within most career women's lives, the internal shift towards a more maternal or a more nurturing or a more softer 
or a more relaxed and a more feminine life will begin to take shape and hold between the ages of 25 to 40. Then all of a sudden it starts to make all the sense in the world why masculine provision is often a necessary complement to completely resting in your feminine. And to boot is super helpful in helping to raise a family. Moving on, high earning women will usually attract lower performing weaker males. Role reversal, boy toys and men who have the perception of being easier to control, but whom often these career women will often not respect. And finally, as for girl boss culture, running a business will often require the very masculine skill set of being able to work under loads of pressure to produce and to consistently repeat success. Being able to manage the expectations of success is the main reason why men were given the physical strength of endurance, stamina, muscles, and stronger shoulders to carry the workload. Now, the only way to course correct the past, of course, is to unlearn and to influence the generations that are coming up behind us, which is why I started this channel to begin with so that they can actually have the influence and the exposure of some feminine mentoring that they otherwise would not have been exposed to. Now, the Glamour article is a great mainstream start and it would be great if other black platforms like The Grio or Essence Magazine or even the black church could jump on board and become a necessary mainstream part of the soft girl revolution. Now to get this conversation started, can you relate to wanting to reclaim your femininity in favor of rest and leisure? Has it been an easy or a very difficult transition for you? And is black culture too dependent upon its women being strong, being matriarchal instead of being soft? And as always, I hope you learned something from listening to this video and I thank you for listening and I thank you for watching and I thank you for subscribing and please share this video if you care to further grow our feminine community. And please stay tuned for more Food for Thought videos to come and I will catch up with you ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers in the next one. Women function on a 28 day hormone cycle and men function on a 24 hour hormone cycle. So men, every single day, they are the same. Their testosterone rises and falls at the same time. Women, hello, we're not men. We're not made to try to act like one another. So you have all these women who are acting like men in the workplace. Be that girl boss. It's just that women are encouraged to act like men. What's that famous Gloria Stein quote, we're becoming the men that we wanted to marry. But what it's actually doing is ruining women's health because you're working all these long hours, you're super stressed out, and you're working on the hormone cycle that men function on. No wonder they're struggling with infertility. No wonder they've got hormonal issues because stress affects us differently hormonally than it does for men.